HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Actually, I should say good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hopkinton High School turf fields for Hopkinton Hillers Baseball. A 6 p.m. start today against the Ashland Clockers, and we are set to get underway. Matt Neal stepping in the batter's box for Ashland. Brendan Kelly is the Hillers pitcher. We'll take you through the lineup in just a moment as we are set to get underway here on this beautiful evening at the turf fields, Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, John Ritz on camera, and the first pitch is ball one. A little nippy tonight there, Tom, at 61. It certainly is. So Matt Neal awaits the next pitch. And this is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, and there's an out. So six to three, four, out number one. That'll bring up the catcher, Jack Matarese. Let's take a look at the Ashland lineup. That was just Matt Neal who grounded out. Jack Matarese, the catcher, batting second. Jackson Hornung, the DH hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the third baseman, hitting cleanup. Brendan Grover, the center fielder, hitting fifth. Alex Amalfi, the pitcher, hitting sixth. Andrew Sternick, the second baseman, hitting seventh. Shea Donovan, the left fielder, hitting eighth. And Dante Avanzo, the shortstop, hitting ninth. As the first pitch is a strike. Hey, I think we might be good now. I'll take you around the infield, third awesome. base, Ryan Kester. Oh, his sister just walked by. Shortstop, Ben McKenzie, yeah, second base, Cole Glassburn at first base, Alex Barker Hook. Left field, Drew Rancatori, center field, Tommy Ambrosino, and right field, Phenom Connor Kelly. Stevie Simos behind the plate, catching Brendan Kelly tonight. You just can't get Ambrosoni right, can you? Oh, I can't get Ambrosoni right. <laughs> his parents are going to shoot me. <laughs> Brendan Kelly set the deal, and there's a strike. You know what's going to happen if he's on tonight, Tom, right? It's fastball, locates his fastball, and they'll go back with his slider. And Coach Simos sending the signals. He'll go twice, three times with the slider in a row. Four to three on the out. And there is out number two. That'll bring up the dangerous Jackson Hornung. Ooh, the ever so dangerous Jackson Hornung. He's the DH today. And he has hit well throughout his high school career and of course his Legion career. Looking forward to seeing Jackson for a lot of Ashland Legion games this season. I'm not, I'm all right with it. I'm not all that jazzed up about it. But he's going to Skidmore, Skidmore College about 2,600 students, that's about, my math says about 800 in each class. Very small school. Cornung sitting at 424 this season, nine runs batted in, 13 runs scored. Kelly deals, there's a swing and a miss. This is mano a mano here, you may, be, may recall two years ago, Jackson Horning was pitching, and Brendan Kelly took him 360 feet to center field, remember that, Tom? That's right. <laughs> you can certainly oh. hit the ball. And there's strike three for out number three. One, two, three. They go in the top of the first to the bottom of the inning we go. The Hillers coming up to bat next on HCAM. Welcome back to the turf fields at Hopkinton High School. The Hillers coming up to the plate. Leading things off is going to be the shortstop, Ben McKenzie. Steve Simos, the catcher, hitting second. Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder, hitting third. Drew Rancatori, the left fielder, hitting cleanup. Connor Kelly, the right fielder, hitting fifth. Alex Parker Hook, the first baseman, hitting sixth. Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, hitting seventh. Jack Breslin, the DH, hitting eighth. Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, hitting ninth. And for the Ashland defense, I send it over to my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklin. With, with pleasure, Tom. You know, I think we may have a viewer from Greece today. We wow. have an international viewership. At third base is Tom Cavanaugh. At shortstop, Dante Divanzo. At second base, Andrew Sternick. At first base, Lucas Rivera. Nice to see Steve O'Leary come down the park. In left field, Shea Donovan. Or center field, Brendan 
Grover. Matt Neal's playing right field. Jack Matteris behind the plate catching Alex Amalfi. This should be a good pitcher's duel tonight, Tom. It certainly should, and we'll take a look at the numbers of Alex Amalfi this season. In just a moment as Ben McKenzie gets set to step in. And that was quite a catch by Jackie Bradley <laughs> Jr. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Alex Amalfi, how about this? A .86 ERA on the season. Two wins, one loss, three games started for the senior as he's set to deal, and he'll deal ball one. We'll see him in the summer, I think. I think so. One of the uh, post-77 uh, bevy of pitchers. Lights starting to come on here at the turf field. Oh, I need lights. First, scared of the dark. First <laughs> evening baseball game on the turf field. And there's a strike, one and one. Amalfi has thrown 16 and a third, giving up two earned runs and struck out 20 on the season. Stevie Simos on deck. McKenzie awaits the pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Ben's got three home runs on the year, showing his pop. And he's hitting a 441 at the plate, 15 for 34 overall, 13 runs driven in for McKenzie, 15 scored, and he has Three home runs to his credit. We yeah. have me. We may have a surprise viewer. I'll let you know about that in the second or third inning. This is going to be a surprise. Let's take a look at the weather today, this evening, as we're waiting for the HCAM Weather Center to get us the latest. It, it was 61 at game time. <laughs> just in case you're looking for a temperature. There we go. I'll take your word for it. Wind but blowing it, from left to right. Yeah, a little bit windy here today, so that could have an effect. Those crack meteorologists down at the HCAM studios. And this is up the left side, past the reach of the shortstop, and McKenzie starts things off with a single. Well, I'm going to go on a tangent now. That's why I don't like turf. That ball would have been scooped up had that been up a field, too, with some grass. Well, it's it, too fast. Yeah, it benefits the hillers. Well... <laughs> All right, I still don't like the turf, even though it costs a million or two million dollars. Steve Simos will step in. He's got three home runs on the year. Ben McKenzie's got 12 swipes, I think. Bit of they a are dueling it out. They certainly are. A bit of a lead for McKenzie at first base. That pitch down low, 1 and 0. Oh. Take a look at the numbers for Steve Simos in just a moment. He is hit well. This season, 467 batting average. That's a team leading. 14 for 30 at the plate. 16 runs driven in. Checking at first, runner back safe. And 16 runs scored. Three homers for Simos. I don't think that was a special move, Tom. I think he's got a better move than that. So Ben's got to be careful over first base. Set to deliver is Amalfi. And Simos gets a piece of this one over to right field. It goes, and that'll drop in for a base hit. That'll put two on with no outs for the Hillers. Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder, will step in. McKenzie up to second, Simos at first. We're starting to see some of the college kids coming in after they finished up their studies at their uh, respective schools. How about Tommy Ambersoni this season? 18 for 41 at the plate, 439 batting average. 12 runs scored, 12 driven in. Coach Simos likes him a lot. He could do lots of things. He can bunt any time, too. Like there, oh. And there you I'm go. I'm Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Called that one. Yeah. Well, he'll do it at any time, any count. Hiller's softball team, I believe, got a win against Ashland today as well. That game's had a 4.15 start. They've it just been killing teams. Cruel, very cruel. Inside move by Amalfi, so nothing doing. Is. They beat Holliston yesterday, I think it was 14 to two. Oh, ugly. They beat him 25 to five the first game. They just go to these schools and they just beat up on these poor girls. They have a great all around team. <laughs> Amalfi set to deal. Bunt pulled back, inside pitch. I'll make the count two and one. Tom Cavanaugh at third base, holding his position, didn't charge on that with Ben McKenzie not being held on at 
second base. Malfi looks at second and is going to take another look over at second base. Slate lead by McKenzie. There's a bunt and it's popped up, caught by the catcher. Matarisi. And that is out number one. That'll bring up Drew Rankatori, the cleanup hitter, and the left fielder. That's really, really unusual for him to bunt into an out. Usually he gets the ball down. That Tammy Tommy Ambrosino. Well, with the way he's been hitting. Or Tommy Ambrosoni. With the way he's been hitting, I was surprised they had him bunt there. Yeah. Coach Simos may think this is going to be a close game. Drew Rankatori, a 405 batting average on the season. 15 for 37 at the plate. Nine runs scored, eight driven in. And pitcher steps off the mound, runners get back. Maybe McKenzie's in Amalfi's head here. Amalfi looks at second base and is now set to deal. Both runners taking off and there's a strike and a double steal for the Hillers. Well, they now still tied for stolen bases, 14 apiece. I checked the stats yesterday, Tom, could have changed. We'll take a look. You know the Hillers are a very good base running team, that's for sure. Malfi working from the stretch here. He's working very deliberately. That's a three, that's a three uh, consonant uh, word, right? Deliberately? That's right. Ben, Mc, ben McKenzie just picked up his eighth steal of the oh. season and Simos is 12th. My There's bad. Strike. Well, here's an old retro Dylan O'Leary, former third baseman on the 2017 Hiller Club. Last year he had a minor Tommy John injury. Malfi set to deal to Rankatori. And he held up, and that is out number two. Connor Kelly, the right fielder, will step in. This kid's going to be one of my favorite players. This kid's doing everything, hitting, Closing out games. Amalfi put a little extra extra mustard on that last pitch to retire Rankatori. 333 batting average for the lefty. Seven runs scored, 13 driven in. Strike one. Coach Simos told me at the beginning of the year, watch out for this kid, Connor Kelly. Amalfi gets the sign he likes. He's set to deal. Fouled away. 0 oh and 2 is the count. I don't think Kelly will see a fastball here. But I've been wrong many, 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 many times before. I certainly know that. <laughs> <laughs> Mulphy set to deal. Down low. 1 and 2 gets away from the catcher. McKenzie will hold up at third. Matarisi knew who was on third base, so he scurried back there, make sure he found the ball. I was just informed our viewer from Greece decided to go to sleep. Well, I imagine <laughs> it's uh, pretty late there. What do they, they got, eight or nine hours on us? Huh. He's just tired. Malfi set to deliver. Down low. Good take by Kelly. Two and two is the count on the right fielder. I hope we get him get to see him come in and close. He's got that filthy, filthy curveball. Mulphy set to deliver. Fouled away. The battle continues on. Now remains two and two on Connor Kelly. He was the best kept secret in Hopkins in baseball, I think. I didn't hear about hear anything about him last year. And he comes up and uh, he's right in the starting lineup. Certainly well deserved. And that is fouled off. Hitting fifth as a sophomore. That's pretty dang good if you ask me. It certainly is. I have a feeling we'll be seeing a lot of Connor Kelly over the next couple of oh, years. Oh, definitely, definitely. Mulphy set to deliver. The leg lift and the pitch. Down low. Full count. Good eye by Kelly. No appeal by Matarisi. Oh, didn't even close. We get a good view from our cameraman, John Ritz, on that one. 
He definitely didn't even come close to going around. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss, and that'll wrap up the first inning. The Hillers have two reach, but come up empty run-wise, and we will head to the top of the second scoreless. It's Hopkinton Hillers baseball on HCAM. Top of the second inning, we are scoreless between Ashland and Hopkinton. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. So I'm Cavanaugh, on the third baseman. Steps in for Ashland, the cleanup hitter. And he takes ball one. He's been logging some innings on the mound this year, Mr. Cavanaugh. Picking up where he left off over the summer at post 77. And that pitch down low, 2 and 0. When do we start doing the uh, American Legion games? That will be mid June. Mid June. And this is up the left side, picked up by Kester. Throw to first, not a problem. 5 to 3 for the out. Good pick by Barker Hook. Bad throw into the outfield, though. Brennan Grover, the center fielder, will step in for Ashland. We do have a special viewer all the way from the west coast of Florida. It's the lovely Miss Noelle Whaley and her son, Jack Whaley. Ah. Who could forget about him, right? Absolutely. The line drive hitting, slick fielding, second baseman. He's down there, he's six foot two now. Wow. He's hitting golf balls. 500 feet. I got a video from his mom just the other day. 500 feet. That Can you believe unbelievable. it? Unbelievable. Absolutely amazing. Pitch down low, one and one to Brendan Grover. Brendan Grover has had some success at the plate for Ashland. He hits them so high and far, Jet Blue is going to reroute their jets. <laughs> just make sure they get clunked by a golf ball. 316 batting average for Grover. 10 runs scored, eight driven in. And he gets a piece of this one up the middle and that'll get in the right field. A one out single for the center fielder. And now the pitcher, Alex Amelfi, will step in. Coach Simo says he uh, hopes Jack Whaley can take a little charter plane up here in between his golf outings, maybe for the playoffs. Absolutely. He really likes that kid. Alex Amelfi who's stepping in is four for 16 at the plate, 250 batting average. Three runs scored, three doubles on the season. Up high, one and oh. Kelly working from the stretch. Runner on first with a slight lead. And this is up the left side. That'll get into left field. And Ashland is going to have two ducks on the pond. See, that would have been scooped up by McKenzie on a regular grass field. That's why I don't like it. Well, it is what it is. Andrew Sternick, the second baseman, will step in. One out, two on. Prom tomorrow night. You going? I was invited. <laughs> I gotta get my hair done at four o'clock. <laughs> and there's a strike. It'll take you about 10 minutes. <laughs> I went to this place with a coupon the other day. Never go to a haircut place with a coupon. And they took out a meat cleaver and a, oh boy. That was awful. Sternick gets a piece of this one over to right field and it's caught and both runners will stay put. Nice catch by Connor Kelly for out number two. They'll bring up Shea Donovan, the left fielder. Shea Donovan is at a 462 on the season. Certainly someone to look out for in this Ashland lineup. He's only a sophomore, 6'4", 13 overall. One run driven in and three scored. Kelly deals down low. I don't know why fans would be watching our broadcast from left field on their uh, telephonic devices. Get a better view. And a Harris commentate, of course. That's right. That's right. 
Brennan Kelly deals. There's a strike. One and one is the count. Let's see if he goes to his breaking stuff. Once he gets the feel for that slider, Coach Simos will have him throw it over and over and over again. Swing and a miss, and it gets away from the catcher. He's going to have to pick it up, but the umpire calls it an out. Or no, did he? Or actually, he got a piece of it, it looks like. That was actually the only, only the second strike, excuse me. I was so Grover is up to third, and Amalfi up to second. Both runners did advance. We don't have the benefit of balls and strikes on this uh, beautiful $75,000 scoreboard. That's right, I gotta rely on my little ball and strike counter and I get very easily distracted as that pitch is just high, two and two. That was a nice breaking pitch by Brendan Kelly. Just went in the dirt, and, or in the turf, and skipped away. The Ashland Clockers, led by Milford High alumni, Matt Messer. We got viewers from Acton, Massachusetts, I understand. And this is up the left side, picked up, bobbled by Kester, throw to first, is going to be off the mark, not in time. A run scores for Ashland, everybody's safe. And up to third is Amalfi, Brendan Grover came around. And D'Avanzo, or excuse me, Shade Donovan, reaches on the error. That'll bring up Dante D'Avanzo, the shortstop. First pitch is a ball. Dante Diavanzo is a freshman hitting at a 172 on the season. Five for 29 at the plate. Seven runs scored, three driven in. Last time out we had Brendan Kelly. It was him and Cronin. Ball low. Cronin from Westwood. It was going to be a uh, battle of the collegians, the D2, D2 kids, and they were chased from the game in the second inning, both of them. So that was a Westwood 15 to 11 game. There's a strike, two and one. You're supposed to swing the bat when the ball goes over the plate, right, Tom? That's right. Right. Run already in for Ashland. Still two runners on, two outs. There's another strike, two and two. Don't be surprised. Coach Simos is sending in his signals to his son, Steven, Steven's out there telling the infielders what's gonna happen. Is he gonna throw the ball through? Should the runner take off? Kelly deals. Strike three, got him looking, and that'll wrap up the top half of the second inning. Ashland does play to run, and they lead the Hillers one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second on each cam. Set for the bottom of the second inning, a one nothing lead for the Clockers. Due up for the Hillers is the six, seven, and eight hitters, Alex Barker-Hook, Brendan Kelly, and Jack Breslin. As Alex Barker-Hook set to step in to face Alex Amalfi. He hit a home run, I think, a game against uh, Millis, the center field. You called that game. And that's fouled away. 292 batting average on the season for the junior Alex Barker Hook. Four runs scored, three driven in, a double and a homer. Is there only hyphenated last name player this year? I'm hyphenated, Larry Sack, lad. <laughs> and this is up the left side, picked up by the third baseman, throw to first, is going to get there. In, or no, it looks like the first base umpire was signaling down to the home plate umpire, but they called him out. So it was a pretty nice play by Dom Cavanaugh. Now I'll bring up Brendan Kelly, the pitcher. Cavanaugh zoomed that thing across the diamond. He's a, he's a prom goer tomorrow night. I can't tell you. It's sworn to secrecy whose date is. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the right side, picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first, not a problem. Andrew Sternick to Lucas Rivera for the four to three out, two away. And that'll bring up Jack Breslin, the DH. How about taking a few pitchers? Jack Breslin 
on the season. Actually, not listed in the stats, and he'll take. Well, a that's strike. because uh, I don't think he's had a plate appearance. He's come in into relief. I believe you are correct. Been very effective. We'll see how he does at the plate. Jerry, his friends call him. I don't know why Jerry. Down low there, one and one. He's got the haircut that sort of looks like a rooster. You remember him from last year, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Wind up in the pitch from Amalfi. Breslin gets a piece of this. Up the middle, and that'll trickle into center field. And Jack Breslin has his first hit of the season. He's hitting a 1,000. I'll bring up Cole Glasper in the second baseman. Very more well. fans, more fans are trickling in here. It's getting very, very tight in the seating area. So it is. In the lower bowl, anyway. Cole Glasper in a 450 batting average on the season. Eight runs scored, five yeah. driven in. Cole said he's going to have six hits today and seven steals. He's always good to put a foot in his mouth. That's fouled away. He'll be heading to Catholic, Catholic University down in Washington, D.C. He'll be a cardinal. How do you like that, Tom? Wow. We get four, four young children heading off to college to play baseball. Two the out. on deck hitter. I'm sorry, didn't mean to step on you. Two outs, one on for the Hillers. As Amalfi takes a peek at first, and now he's set to deal. Fouled away. Oh, and two. Got Ben McKenzie on deck. He's going to Bowden. He's going to be a polar bear <laughs> in the winter too. Mom Laura's gonna bundle him up, make sure he doesn't freeze to death up there. Have his fair share of lobster. Up high. One and two. Certainly uh, a whole lot of talented athletes for Hopkinton High School. It's unbelievable, here isn't it? In the senior class. It's absolutely unbelievable. Runner with a lead at first check in, slides back just safe. Quick feet by Amalfi. You logged some nice innings for post 77 this past summer. Certainly did, and I'm sure it'll be heavily relied upon again. A nice pull down by the first baseman, Lucas Rivera. Luke Gustafson, who pitched for Ashland last year's. Chewing it up at Tufts University. He's got about 40, 40 something innings. He's a number one guy over there. Long, He'll be back. Long look at first. He deals, swing and a miss. And that is strike three for out number three. And we will head to the top of the third. Ashland leading Hopkinton one to nothing on each camp. Top of the third inning, due up for Ashland is the top of the order. Matt Neal, Jack Matt and Jackson Horning. Coach Simos pulled the trick play off. Uh, I can't say against the team because it's, it's top secret, but it was a very, very effective trick play. I don't want him to call me out at banquet time. Matt Neal hitting a 233 on the season, and he takes strike one there. He got very mad at me when I told uh, during a broadcast that uh, Ben McKenzie had a sore arm and he couldn't throw from center. All the other teams ran on him. Uh, we went around on that one. There's strike two. Well, maybe we should make up stuff like that so the other teams think that they have a sore Ooh, arm. Oh, good point. There we go. Now we're on to something. That's a... Just outside, one and two. That's a very good point, Tom. I'll just... I'll be the rumor, Bill. And I, the next inning, I've got a rumor I heard. It's getting around town pretty quick. All right. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Out number one. Sit down, kid. And that is strikeout number three for Brendan Kelly. Check. I feel sad for, sad for the boys that strike out. You know what I mean? I feel sad for them. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the dugout and take a seat. It's like you uh, <laughs> in high school. Yeah. yeah. You trying to find a prom date? <laughs> oh, and he, one. He was a nice reach. guy. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's strike two. I like this home plate umpire. He's animated. I think he's going to come around the breaking pitch. 
Matt Arias had a 222 on the season inside. And he did. One and two is the count. Three runs scored for Matt Arisi and four driven in. Just outside, two and two. We're up for one of the uh, local cable awards, are we not, for these broadcasts? Yeah, I heard <laughs> it's for your commentary. Good. No, no, the, no. The color commentary on the broadcast. A little color. And he gets a piece of this one up the right side. It goes, takes a couple hops. It's dropped by the first baseman. Barker Hook didn't realize he dropped it. And Matt Arisi's going to reach on the error. Kelly was in position to, to uh, cover the bag, but Barker Hook put his glove down there and found uh, it was empty. Now Jackson Horning will step in. Can't do that. He got him whiffing before. Brendan and him played... Uh, uh, club ball against each other. This is, this is a, I want to get you up bad. There's a strike. Horning at a 424 on the season. This is personal. This battle here, this is really, really personal. Jackson Horning actually won the Metro West Daily News TVL Athlete of the Year. And he'll get a piece of this one over to right field. It goes. That'll get down for a base hit. Matt Arisi, the lead runner, heading over to third. Will he be waved around? Yes, he will. The throw home is going to be out of the glove of Simos, and Matt Arisi scores, and now up to third is Hornung. So Hornung gets an RBI double, advances to third on the throw in, and Matt Arisi scores the second run of the day for the Clockers. Oh, you got a little rug burn there, Jackson? Yeah, that, well, now, now I think it's even now. Tom Cavanaugh will step in, the third baseman. See, that's a problem with the turf. It's not as safe as dirt. You get turf burns. Cavanaugh had a 429 on the season, five runs scored, 13 driven in, six doubles to his credit. What are you saying about Jackson winning an award? He won the uh, Metro West Daily News TVL Athlete of the Year award. Oh, he's a three sports star, football, right. hockey, and this baseball game here. Brendan Kelly also a three sports star. Tremendous hockey player. Well, tremendous athlete in general, but especially hockey. There's a strike. Well, Brendan Kelly's had some bad luck this inning. He's had that error over at first base by. Yeah, both runs are unearned. And this is hit up the left side, picked up by Kester, and he's gonna try to tag out Hornung to throw home to Simos. And Simo chasing it back to third, the throw over, and they get him. Throws it over to McKenzie to get the lead runner. A nice play there. Tom Cavanaugh advanced to second, so Cavanaugh does reach. Hornung stayed in the rundown long enough to get Cavanaugh over, but Stevie Simos ran a little bit too close to third base to throw. And the umpire asked Ben McKenzie to show him the ball. And he showed him the ball, and he banged him out. That was a nice play by Kester, though. Certainly was. So two outs in the inning. Saved a run there. Inside. One and O oh count. I'll take you through the TVL standings in just a moment as well. Ashland is six and five on the year. Hiller is ten and two. And this is hit in the air over to center field and caught way back by Tommy Ambrosoni for the third and final out of the inning. But Ashland does play another run. It's two to nothing clockers as we head to the bottom of the third on H cam. Bottom of the third inning coming up for the Hillers is the top of the order. Ben McKenzie, Steve Simos, and Tommy Ambrosoni. Well, there's no cars for Ben to hit here at this turf field. That's another reason why I don't like it. No parking lot jobs. Well, you might be able to hit it past the grass baseball field. FYI, it's 133 in the Greek Islands. That's why we lost that view or ball high. One and O oh to McKenzie. Line up and the pitch. 
Swing and a miss, one and one. Big cut. Ben McKenzie had a 441 batting average on the season. 15 runs scored, 13 driven in, four doubles, three homers. Mulphy with the leg lift and the pitch, fouled away, one and two. I mentioned Jack Whaley earlier today. He's sipping an Arizona iced tea in 76 degree weather down in Naples, Florida. Putting his feet up on the mom's sofa in the air conditioning. Oh, we're uh, freezing up here. Absolutely. It's cold. Yeah, it's that wind, little wind gusts. Ooh, a little high, a little high. Only can count two and two. So that's what they do down south, sip, sip iced tea. Yep. <laughs> 2-2 pitch from El Malfi. Ooh, McKenzie thought about it and they get him for out number one. That's a nice bender by El Malfi. He had been frozen. Steve Simos will step in. Rumor is, Tom, that the uh, HKM is having some new programming this, uh, this spring. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's the... Uh, Hopkinton Dating Club. So all the bachelorettes and the bachelors. And rumor has it you're going to be the, uh, uh, what would they call it? Not the major D, but. Swing in and miss by Simos. Okay, you're the host. Oh, that's right. So you'll be asking. Uh, I'm, I'm the host and you're the bachelor. No, 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 no. I, I can't handle more than that. <laughs> but you'll be asking, you know, do you take long walks on beaches? Do you eat dandelion salad? Egg salad, tuna salad. And that's bubble. <laughs> filed away, 0 oh and 2. That would be a great show. I think that, you know, it'd be better than, you know. You, you'll have to mention no you'll names. You'll have to pitch that one to our production department. I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> we'll have some. <laughs> never. <laughs> so, where would you take your first date? Wind up in the pitch. Oh, we'd go for a long walk on the beach with a. Five million other people. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know if I could have you do evening games anymore. <laughs> Count is 0 and 2 on Simos. He singled his last time up. My IQ drops like the uh, temperature. <laughs> Malfi takes a long look in and is set to deliver. And this is ripped up the left side. That'll get through for a base hit. And Simos is aboard at first with one out. That'll bring up Tommy Ambrosoni, the center fielder. See, if we were on a, a regular grass field, that would have been a single. <laughs> Tommy Ambrosoni, a 439 batting average on the season. 12 runs scored, 12 driven in. Amalfi knows Stevie Simos is on first base. He's going to take his time, hold, hold the ball maybe a little bit longer, maybe throw over. Gave Simos a look. Down low. One and oh count on Ambersoni. Coach Simos said he was going to do a lot of bunt, run, hit and run, play a little small ball if he has to. There's the situation here. Tommy. Well, Ambersoni uh, did try to bunt last time. Ended up popping out to the catcher for the first out in the first inning. Simos continues to take a pretty significant lead off of first base. And there's a strike. I'll make the count one and one. Malfi's been impressive so far, mixing up his fastball and his breaking pitch. He had uh, Ben McKenzie fooled on that bender earlier. <laughs> Set to deal. And this is hit in the air, past the reach of the second baseman. Into right field it goes, throw to second, in time! What a play by Matt Neal to get Simos trying to get over to second base on the force play. Oh, and Ambrosoni reaches on the very rare nine to six fielder's choice. Coach Simos is looking towards the camera over here like we're gonna give him an instant replay. I don't know, that was close, that was close. That You'll have to slow it down in the studio. Certainly something I'd like to see again. Well, Stevie played it right. He made sure the ball got through. But it's a nice throw, the right fielder. That was, it was very close. 
tough call to make. And this is hit in the watch air. Watch out, Tom. Watch out. Watch out. Coming towards us. And no one can get to it. Kavanaugh was running right at me. Us. <laughs> oh, great camera shot. He's on that got one, his huh? eye black, though. Huh? <laughs> He's got his eye black tonight. That's what happens. I thought I was going to have to get my baseball glove out real no, quick. No, no. See, I wasn't moving. <laughs> I was hoping Kavanaugh ran into you. Yeah, uh, well. Mulphy set to deliver to Rankatori. Two outs in the inning. Swing and a miss. Runner taking off from first to throw up. Not in time. So Amber Sony reaches safely at second. Third stolen base of the game for the Hillers. The running rebels, they call them. No, they don't call them that. They need a hit here out of Rankatori, though. That'd be nice. Play to run. Two outs, Tommy. will be running. Line up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air. Over to center field it goes. That'll get down. Lead runner, Tommy Emersoni, being waved around. And he will score. A 2-1 Ashland lead, an RBI single for Drew Rancatori. Well, I think Drew Rancatori might have made a base running mistake there. He saw the ball go through to the plate, but he didn't take second base. I don't know, his parents probably don't like me saying that, but I think he could have had second base. Easy. Well, it's Connor Kelly. He drove in the run at least. That's I know. Good. That's pretty good. A ribby is a ribby. <laughs> Connor Kelly steps in. Tying run at first base. Mulphy deals. Down low, runner taking off from first. And an easy steal there for Rankatori. Fourth steal of the game for the Hillers. I don't know whether that was a delay or whether he read that out of Mulphy's hand that it was going to be low. Either way, it's a stolen base for Drew Rankatori. He should have been on second base. Well, now he's there anyway. No harm, no foul. And stepping out of the batter's box is Connor Kelly. Now he's back in and ready for the pitch with a runner in scoring position. There's a strike. A little extra on that one, huh, Tom? It certainly was. One and one. That was spicy mustard, that pitch. Melfi looks at second and is set to deal. Time called. Kelly's Hitters have that internal clock in their head, 1-1000, one, 2-1000, one thousand, one thousand, three, one thousand. And whenever they decide that it's time's up, they'll call time. Kelly takes the low pitch there, two and one. Did he whip the last time up against Melfi? He did. He did. Connor Kelly at a 333 coming into tonight's game. Line up and the pitch down low. Three and one now is the count. There's two outs in the inning. Runner on second for the Hillers. Hopkinton has played it a run. It's two to one Ashland here on the bottom of the third. Mulphy deals. Swing and a miss. That'll fill up the count. That's his blind spot there. Low and inside. That's where he got him before. He wouldn't be able to hit that one with a nine iron. Mulphy deals. Kelly gets a piece of this one. Over to left field it goes and it's caught by Shea Donovan for the third out of the inning. The Hillers play to run. It's two to one Ashland heading to the top of the fourth on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Set for the top of the fourth inning, due up for Ashland six, seven, and eight. 
Alex Amalfi, Andrew Sternick, Shea Donovan here on a nice evening at the Hopkinton High School turf fields. Let's take you through the TVL baseball standings. We'll start off with the TVL large. The Hillers are well at the top with a record of 10 and 2. Ashland in second at 6 and 5. Westwood at 5 and 4. Medfield 6 and 6. Norwood 4 and 7. Holliston 3 and 6 as the first pitch is a strike. In the TVL small, Bellingham 7 and 4. Norton 7 and 4. Medway 6 and 3. Dedham at the top at 9 and 2. Dover Sherborne's 3 and 9. And Millis is 2 and 8. 1 and 1 count. We'll be uh, hosting Dedham here, won't we? I believe so. Line up in the pitch. And this is going to trickle up the left side. Picked up by Kester. Throw to first. And he got him. Five to three, four out number one. Nice play by Kester. Yeah, he didn't have to hot dog it like that, throwing off one foot. He could have set himself and made it easy, but it's an out. Now stepping in is Andrew Sternick. He flew out his last time up. There's a strike. Brendan Kelly's has got a hard luck stat line today. Two unearned runs. And this is going to take a couple hops on the infield grass. Up the left side. Picked up by Kester. Five to three. Four out number two. Well, All right. Kester's been busy today. Certainly has. His sister's a better ball player, though. <laughs> Tara. Shea Donovan, the left fielder, will step in. Hi, Mrs. Custer. <laughs> we'll have to tell him you said that. They wear the same numbers. Kelly's set to deal. Inside, a little chin music. Ooh, chin music, yes. You haven't asked me how I'm doing with my diet. Well, I could just tell by looking at you. Yeah. Shea Donovan... At a 462 on the season, he's going to maybe add on to that here, and it's past the dive of the left fielder, Drew Rankatori. Up to second goes Donovan, and that's where he will stop. A 2-0 double for the left fielder. Hmm. And he he should have probably pulled up on that one and just fielded it and let it be a single. Yeah, a little misread real there. Risky, real risky, risky business. I'll bring up Dante Diavonzo, the shortstop. Kelly from the stretch. Ooh, inside, one and oh. <laughs> get off the plate, that's a get off the plate pitch. Yeah. I had four honey dips this morning, if you wanna know. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Yeah, that's the diet. Pound of bacon at night. Four honey dips in the morning. There you go. Devonzo is at a 172 coming into this game. He's going to add on to that here. That'll get down into center field. And being waved around is Shea Donovan. And it's a 3-1 to one Ashland lead. An RBI single for Dante Devonzo. Squared that ball up nice. And that was a nice play by Tommy Ambersoni, who got the ball into the cutoff man, Kester, to uh, prevent uh, the runner from... Taking an extra base. Matt Neal will step in, the right fielder. Coach Simos preaches fundamentals. Inside. Nothing drives him more crazy than a fielder not hitting the cutoff man. Kelly from the stretch. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Well, we don't have to wonder about what the umpire is calling today. Our last game. It was like a silent movie. <laughs> Inside. Two and one. Brendan showing some good velocity today. Kelly from the stretch, runner with a bit of a lead. 
at first. Ivanzo is a threat to take off. And he thought about it there. That one's fouled off the backstop. Two and two. He had about two steps down towards second base. I don't think Brendan's thrown over once today. Maybe wrong. He's got a decent move. I think Coach Simos calls that from the bench. And this is hit high in the air, out of the reach of everybody. Oh. That went over to the parking lot. Giant glass is out of business. No harm, no harm over there. Yvonzo with the lead once again. Line up and the pitch. And this is up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, flipped to second for the fourth out. And that will retire the side here in the top of the fourth. But Ashland does play another run, and they lead Hopkinton 3-1 to one on each camp. Bottom of the fourth inning, stepping in for the Hillers is Alex Barker-Hook, the first baseman, sixth in the lineup. Two up after him, Brennan Kelly and Jack Breslin. Amalfi pitching a gem so far. And this is hit foul. Oh and one. It's an error on the third base coach, Brent McKenzie. Should have had that one easy. <laughs> I think I see Hopkins finest down here for some uh, traffic control. Got an overflow crowd. Up high. One and one. Look at all these people, Tom. Yeah, it's a great turnout tonight. I think uh no, don't say it. Don't say it. we should all do night games. Forget it. <laughs> it's working out. This is it in the air. Two left field and caught by Donovan. One away. Played perfectly by Donovan. Certainly was. No, no, no more night games. This is our debut and finale. All in one. Come on, you don't want some baseball no, on I a want hot 80, summer night? I want an 80 degree day. With some frankfurters and some hot, icy spot, spicy, hot, spicy mustard. Brandon Kelly steps in. He grounded out in his only plate appearance this game. He'll take ball one. The right field fence is about 350 feet. Nobody's launched one over there this year. There's a strike. He's got more than warning, pack, warning track power. Brandon Kelly does. 412 batting average on the season for Kelly. Eight runs scored, five driven in. I would warn our cameraman right now that if he hits, uh, hits the ball late, it's coming right into his camera. He better be ducking. Wind starting to pick up a little here. It's a crosswind blowing from first to third. Two one, and this is up the middle, picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first, not a problem. Four to three, four out number two. Jack Breslin, the DH, will step in. That would have hit a gopher hole up at field two. He would have had a single. Again, it's too quick. Two hops. Malfi deals. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. Breslin uh, is on the hoop team. He'll be a senior next year, I think. One of your better free throw shooters in the TVL. Leg left and the pitch. Swing and a miss, so and two. A little late on that one. Breslin singled in his only plate appearance back in the second inning. First hit of the year. He's hit the 1,000. That's right. See if he can keep that perfect batting average here. If he doesn't, he'll hit 500 then. And there's a strikeout. So that is going to wrap up the bottom of the fourth. One, two, three, they go. Ashland the leading Hopkinton as we head to the fifth on H cam. Ashland leading three to one. Top of the fifth inning. Two, three, and four do up for Ashland who leads Hopkinton three to one. Jack Matarisi, the catcher, steps in followed by Jackson Hornung. And Dom Cavanaugh. <laughs> Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. 
Arisi is 0 for 2 today, reached on an error in the third and scored a run. There's a strike, 0 and 2. If uh, Coach Simos is true to form, he saw that breaking pitch, he's gonna have him throw another one right now. And this is up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw to first. Got him, six to three for the out. Nice job by McKenzie. Nice call by me, that was a nice breaking pitch. Certainly was, Jackson Horning will step in. I've heard that we've been scouted. Other teams have watched our broadcast and they're playing or coming up with a game plan based on our coverage. I don't think that's fair. Yeah, I don't you gotta lock them out. Yeah. We'll have to find a way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jackson Horning is one for two today, had an RBI double in the third. Takes ball two there. Well, now they're even, I mentioned in between innings, that home run up Jackson and that blowout game a couple years ago. Jackson grabbed third on the throw. There's a strike. <laughs> Two and one. Well, Brennan Kelly, a 7.54 ERA on the season. Two wins, one loss. There's a strike. Five appearances. That's not indicative of how he pitches in the way people keep score. Line up and the pitch. And this is a foul ball. Count remains two and two. Kelly has struck out 13 hitters coming into this game. No. Morning steps in and Kelly set to deal. The 2-2 pitch. That time call looks like Morning had something in his eye. Could have been a fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got the, a lot of flies. Flies, there are flies here. <laughs> Mid-May. They're Mayflies. <laughs> oh, ooh, inside, full count. It was a Major League Baseball game the other day. I think it was the Reds and Giants. And they had a delay because of bees all over the field. Oh, I thought they were locusts. But if you say bees, I believe you. Yeah, maybe it was locusts. I don't know. Something that stings. Swing and a miss. And he got him. Out number two. Swing batter. Got him with the bender. I'll bring up Tom Cavanaugh, the third baseman. It's the fourth strikeout of the game for Brendan Kelly. And Dom Cavanaugh, Mr. I Black himself. Inside. Brendan Kelly, Stevie Simos, and Ben McKenzie took a trip down to uh, Ashland Legion to see if they could get waivers. We were very impressed with uh, ooh, that ball. This huh? hit in the air to right field and caught. For the third out of the game of the inning, and that will send this game into the bottom of the fifth with Ashland leading three to one on HCAM. HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Bottom of the fifth, nine one and two do up for the Hillers. Cole Glassburn steps in. He'll be followed up by Ben McKenzie and Steve Simos. Swing and a miss. Very late swing by Cole. I think he's going to the prom tomorrow too. Got Connor Kelly coming down to uh, warm up in the bullpen. That'll be a treat for the fans at home. Oh and two. Nothing but air with that swing. Very late. Swing and a miss, out number one. He's gonna take a seat. 
It'll bring up Ben McKenzie, the shortstop. So will Kelly turn the ball over to Kelly? We'll see. I'm assuming they'd bring Brandon out for the sixth and see if he has a hard time or not. But who knows? There's a strike. And Malfi's throwing a game. Certainly is. He's pitched well all season long for Ashland. One swing of the bat, though, he can cut this lead in half. That'll get away one and one. He's got more than warning track power, Ben McKenzie does. He's coming back from a torn labrum. I can say that now. There's a strike, one and two. And McKenzie is one for two today, single to start off the game, and struck out his last time up. Yeah, back on a curveball. Third, ball. got him on a curveball last time. Down low. His father's done a nice job coaching third base this year, picking up for Coach Vera. Oh, Just outside. He's lucky to still be standing there. Levin was left his shoes in the batter's box there. And he'll draw the walk. So it'll be one on with one out for the Hillers. And that is the first walk of the game by Amalfi. Curveball got out of the bullpen. Heads up. I'll bring up Steve Simos. Well, what will Coach Simos do with the run game here? A great contact hitter, speedy runner. Amalfi knows that. Don't be surprised if he throws over. Some of the Hiller fans are on the edge of their seats, and this is in the air. It's going to be out of play. And just behind us it goes. Oh, and one. Oh, they're on the edge of their seats. They can't stand the tension. Mals. Breaking pitch just high. One and one. Really gotta watch out, John, with his with his stick here. He slices one over here, you better duck. <laughs> That sound was a baseball. <laughs> They're trying to kill us over here. And this is up the middle, slow roller. Picked up by the second baseman, throw to first. They will get Simos, but McKenzie is pushed up to second. So four to three on the out, two away. That'll bring up Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder. He's got the only RBI today, doesn't he? You are cor incorrect. Incorrect. Katori has the only oh, RBI. Oh, that's true, true. And Rossoni has the only run. I knew it was something like that. Swing and a miss. So and one. He's crafty, this Amalfi. He should be a lefty. Works very deliberately. Runner on second, two outs for the Hillers. Ashland leading here in the bottom of the fifth, three to one. Down low, gets away from the catcher and the runner is gonna push up to third. So McKenzie pushes up on the pass ball. Even if he picked that ball up cleanly, that was too low. Ben was reading that all the way. He saw the down angle, he knew he was gonna Swipe third base. A bloody little 15 footer here will play to run. Just high. Two and one. We'll take cheap hits here at Hopkinton High, right? Absolutely. Wind up and the pitch. And he'll get a piece of this one, but it's foul up Ooh. the right side. I thought I saw chalk. Two and two. 
Look at the crowd. My goodness. The after dinner crew are down here. We'll have to start having these games at Fenway soon. Oh, no, 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 no. Need to put a roof on the bleacher behind home plate. Handle this overflow crowd. Everybody adorned in their green and orange. And he holds his swing and takes ball three. Good take. Out. Drew Rankatori uh, waiting on deck. He wants a little piece of Amalfi. And he will draw the walk. A nice job by Amber Sony. And that'll put runners at first and third with two outs for the cleanup man, Drew Rankatori. So, Tom, here's the question. Will Coach Simo send Amber Sony, allow himself to get into a pickle, and send McKenzie home? Or are they going to just let him take second? What are they going to do? I think it is very possible. This is hit high in the air to the left side, and it is going to be caught by the left fielder, Shay Donovan, who called off the shortstop, Dante Diavanzo. And a nice, nice catch there by Donovan for the third out of the inning. So despite two reaching for the Hillers, they still find themselves down three to one as we head to the top of the sixth on H cam. Top of the sixth inning, due up for the Clockers is five, six, and seven. Brendan Grover, Alex Amalfi, and Andrew Sternick. Brendan Kelly remains on the mound for the Hillers. He has pitched a very good game so far. Despite giving up three runs, only one of those was earned. Yeah. We got music in between innings here and everything. Up the right side, picked up by the first baseman. Did he get there in yeah, time? He yes, did. he did. Nice job by Alex Barker Hook. Started a little slow, and they said, whoops, this guy's got some wheels. Better hurry up. Alex Amalfi, the pitcher, will step in. What do you think of the music in between innings? I, I, I'm that adds to it. the uh, ambiance. It's terrific. It's country, too. I enjoy country. I know, you're a DJ. Down low. Professional one. One and oh. Line up and the pitch. Two and oh. It's a little low, a little low. Set to deliver. Just high. Brendan wanted that pitch. Oh, look at this. There's a little little Hopkin and Hiller over by the third base. Dug out with his little plastic bat. Nice pitch. Right down the middle. Three. He'll be a future Hiller. He's only about two feet tall now. <laughs> you see him. Yep. The orange bat. Yeah, about... Uh, 16 years or so. Yeah, yeah. I think his name is Mal. Amalfi draws the walk, so one on with one out. Andrew Sternick will step in. We saw Andrew this past summer for a little bit. Yep. Didn't see a lot of action at post 77. He could have a much bigger role this year. So far today, he's 0 for 2. There's a strike. One on, one out for the clockers here in the top of the sixth. Brendan Kelly's pitch count must be close to 70, mid-70. Up the left side, Kester with a dive, picks it up, and he will not be able to get the throw off, and everybody's going to be safe. He did try to throw to second to get Amalfi caught off guard. So Sternick reaches on the single, Amalfi pushed up to second, and that'll bring up Shea Donovan. Kester had to eat that one. He couldn't do anything with that. Yeah, that's just a tough play to make there. Been the story of the game for Brendan Kelly. Tough luck. So 
And then Kelly working from the stretch. Both runners taking a lead. He deals. And that's fouled away over the stands. O and one. Brendan will be heading to Stonehill College for your information in September. He'll be a Skyhawk. Is that a bird? I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hawk that goes in the sky. A Skyhawk. I like it. Yeah. He uh, hasn't picked a major yet. He could be a monk to Jesuit school. Brendan Kelly takes a look at second, and he deals. Yeah. There's a strike. Grab the inner corner. O oh and two. Got to swing the bat, young man. Or you find yourself on a bench with bat in hand. Kelly deals. This is up the middle. It'll take a couple hops. Picked up by Glassburn. Throw to first. They do get an out, but both runners advance. Melfi up to third, Sternick up to second, and Shea Donovan thrown out four to three. Two away, that'll bring up Dante Diavanzo, the shortstop. He had an RBI single back in the fourth. I venture to say Amalfi's all about 160 pounds. He's not a big kid. Brendan Kelly's 6'2", 220, and they are dueling today. They certainly are. Kelly. Oh, I'm sorry. From the stretch, deals. There's a strike. A lot of chatter over in that Ashley and dugout. They got the right to do it. They got the lead. They certainly do. I'm talking to the Ashland coaches before the game, Coach Messer and Manguso. They stated this is a big one for them. How big? Very big. They really... Uh, Need to win this game. Huge. One and one is the count. Well, the Hillers have got control of the TVL at this point. And that is just low, two and one. Well, through half the season, you got a three and a half game lead or so. Yeah. Certainly comfortable, but can't be too comfortable. Mm -hmm. Tough schedule coming up. Young Stevie Simos catching Brendan Kelly today. He'll be going to Bowden with uh, Ben McKenzie. He'll be a polar bear too. They're not roommates though. Gotta tell you, they're not roommates. I think that's a good thing. 2-1. Down low, 3-1. and one. Chance to load up the bases here for Ashland. Maybe that's the plan, to just pitch around him. Matt Put Neal, the horse the, in. Matt Neal, the leadoff hitter, is due up next. There's a strike that'll fill up the count. That looked good as soon as it left his hand. Kelly deals. Swing and a miss. Strike three for out number three. And we will head to the bottom of the sixth. It's Ashland leading Hopkinton, three to one on HCAM. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Hillers down to their last six outs, trailing three to one. Due up for Hopkinton is five, six, and seven. Connor Kelly, Alex Barker Hook, and Brendan Kelly to face Alex Amalfi, who has pitched an absolute gem so far today. We knew it was going to be a tight one when it started. Leg lift and the pitch in there for a strike. Let's see what the rookie could do with his stick. Connor Kelly is 0 for 2 today. Strike two. Kelly didn't like it. No, not at all. I thought it was a little high. You're a very good body language reader. He didn't like it. 
Line up in the pitch. Fouled away. Spoiled that one. Over to the Ooh, soft, watch out, girls. Softball stands it goes. That's a goner. Nobody's getting that ball. <laughs> it's too cold. The 2 Up high. Ooh. Well, Ashland is, I think, relying on Alex Amelfi to try to complete this game. I haven't seen any warm-up action yet from the Clockers. Well, they don't have a bullpen to warm up in, so. Swing and a miss. Out number one. It'll bring up Alex Barker Hook, the first baseman. Hopkins has had all about what, four hits today, if that? Six. Six hits? Six hits. My bad. There's a strike. They haven't strung a bunch together. Just one run. Alex O'Malfi had just a .86 ERA heading into this game. As this is hit in the air to right field and caught two away. Pillars down to their final four outs. Now bring up Brendan Kelly, the pitcher. He's grounded a second both times, I think. Neal out in right field looked up in the lights there. I thought he lost the ball for a second. Brendan's hit the ball hard though. Right at people. <laughs> Just high. Swing and a miss, one and one. Brennan Kelly grounded out to second base both times up. Yeah, that was an angry swing on Brendan's part. Last time down here, he tripled. Fouled away, one and two. And he, once he turned, to, turned second base, he was lumbering in the big 220 pounder. Wind up and the pitch, just outside. Two and two is the count. Malfi deals. Hit high in the air over to left field and it is caught. One, two, three, they go in the bottom half of the sixth inning to the top of the seventh we go. Ashland leading Hopkinton three to one on each cam. Top of the seventh, the new pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers. Connor Kelly is in the game to relieve his brother, Brendan Kelly. Brendan pitched <laughs> six innings. Tell, the, tell the fans the truth. Come on. Three runs. <laughs> and only one of those runs was earned. So Good Brendan, game. Good game by Brendan Kelly. It certainly was. Now, and uh, fans should have a treat watching this young man. Yeah. Fortunately, there was a couple errors that... Led to a couple runs. That's what they call them errors. They're unfortunate. So Connor Kelly's got a nasty, nasty breaking pitch. Matt Neal starts things off for Ashland. Top of the order for the Clockers. And we also have a change in right field. Cam Jarrett is now in right field to take over for Connor Kelly, who was the starting right fielder. And Brandon Kelly out of the game. Coach Simos has been going to Connor Kelly late in games to finish things off. The 1-0, swing and a miss. He's got a really nice, smooth delivery. Then when he throws that yacker, he's got those batters backing out of the batter's box. 1-1. And just inside, says the umpire, 2 and 1. Oh, that looked good. Oh, yeah. That, that looked really good. That's a rough break. Connor Kelly has made six appearances 
has a zero ERA, has recorded three saves. There's a strike. He has pitched eight and a third of an inning, giving up six hits, no runs, walking three, striking out nine. Nice strikeout to walk ratio. Wow, There's that was really close. There's a walk there to Matt Neal. He'll bring up Jack Matarisi, the catcher. For a sophomore, this kid throw, shows a lot of composure. Connor Kelly looks at first and now deals. And an attempt to steal, the throw to second, got him, one away. Caught stealing is Matt Neal, what a throw by Simos. Yeah, he slid past the bag, I think, and uh, Ben McKenzie got him on the arm, or he got him straight out, one or the other. I'll have to do on replay here, what, what happened? Well, it's uh, two to six, out. 1-0. Two and O. Oh. The ever so dangerous Jackson Horn on waiting on deck. So now the bases are clear with one out for Ashland here in the top of the seventh. But they do have the three to one lead, and it's now three and O to Matarisi. Kelly's not getting a break with the home plate umpire today. Certainly isn't. He's on the take. He's on the take, Tom. There's a strike, three and one. Can I say that? It's on the take. Sure. See if Kelly breaks out the breaking pitch. Oh, the umpire's asking the first base umpire for the count. He may have lost the count. They have these secret signals these umpires do. The three one. Excuse me, I guess that was the 2-1. See, the umpires have these secret signals if they lose the count. Wind up in the pitch. There's a walk. There's Hornung with Kavanaugh right behind him. One on and one out for Ashland. Jackson Horning so far today is one for three at the plate, had an RBI double in the third. That scored Matt Arisi to make it a two to nothing game at the time. And he's up, oh, throw over. He's susceptible to a breaking ball. He's a dead red fastball hitter, Jackson. Yeah, that pitch right there, that was, the, that was the nasty stuff. Filthy, dirty. A very nice breaking pitch. Runner with the lead at first. Kelly will check in, runner slides back safe. Will Kelly go right back to that breaking pitch? The 0-1. Hit in the air over to right field to the fence. And that is still in play, went off the fence. Lead runner is going to be stopped at third. And now the throw over to third and he slides back just safe. Coach Messer was frantically running in front of him telling him to go back. But Jackson Hornung with a long double. Matarisi over at third. So it's two in scoring position with one out. And you got Dom Cavanaugh coming to the plate. Yeah, got the number four hitter. I think Hornon got a hanging breaking ball. He hit that one a mile. I thought it was out of here. <laughs> mm. That was close. I think it hit the fence in the air. Hey, yep, it did. I think the coach sign most might give him the four-fingered salute. Just walk him. Yep, that's what he's going to do. So an intentional walk to Dom Cavanaugh. Now Brennan Grover will step in. Bases loaded for Ashland with one out. Oh, I'll tell you, the Hoppy and the Hillers are lucky to have Coach Simos as a coach. He's fabulous. The kids just love him. They'll go to the end of the earth for that guy. Do 
we have a pinch hitter up here? I will confirm that in a moment. Swing and a miss. Very late. Nope, still Brandon Grover. Oh, okay. My bad. Certainly is your bad. Okay. <laughs> Connor Kelly set the deal. And he held his swing, and that's ball one, one and one. Nice block by Stevie Simos. Well, you know you have a reliable catcher behind the plate when it's Stevie Simos. Yeah. Except the thing with the turf there, if you bounce up a curveball, it's liable to go right over your head. 1-1. One, one. And this is on the ground, up the middle, picked up by the shortstop, throw home. And he got him. Great play by Ben McKenzie. So Brennan Grover reaches on the 6-2 force out. Two away. Ben McKenzie knew exactly what he was going to do with that ground ball. He was going home with it. Hornung up to third, Kavanaugh up to second. Brandon Grover at first, Alex Amalfi to the plate. There's a strike. That's right, this is a breaking pitch. The 0 1 down low. One and one. There's a strike. He's not afraid to throw it, and Coach Simos is not afraid to call it. One and two is the count. The high school level, the breaking pitch is the hardest thing to, to pick up. Ash. Anybody can hit fastballs. Yep. Wind up in the pitch. Just outside. Ashland leading three to one. We're in the top of the seventh. The clockers have the bases loaded with two outs. Two two count on Alex Amalfi, the pitcher and six hitter in the lineup. Fouled away. Steady diet of breaking pitches. Count remains two and two. Will he sneak a heater by him? No. There's strike three. So despite Ashland getting the bases loaded with one out, Connor Kelly pitches his way out of the jam, and we will head to the bottom of the seventh with the score Ashland three, Hopkinton one. It's Hiller's Baseball on H Cam. Bottom of the seventh inning, the Hillers down to their final three outs, trailing Ashland three to one. Due up is eight, nine, and one. Jack Breslin, Cole Glassburn, and Ben McKenzie. So if they don't score two runs here in this inning, it means they lose? That's right. Oh. <laughs> That's how this game works. You're picking up on things, Larry. Oh. Glassburn said he's going to have six hits today. Done nothing. One pulled back, ball one. Well, that's one way to get on base. Breslin is one for two today. A single Dan struck out. Hmm. Fouled away. One and one. Alfie deals, fall into the backstop. Just got a piece of it there, one and two. Breslin hitting 500 on the year. One for two. That's fouled away, good battle here between Jack Breslin and Alex M. Alfie. He's a lot of legs, M. Alfie, isn't he? Or he wears his pants up high, one or the other. <laughs> Brazil's gonna take a walk. 
collect his thoughts here. I think that's what he's doing. The one, two, swing and a miss, out number one. Cole Glassburn will step in. Things are looking a little bleak for the Hillers. I don't think there's a pinch hitter for Glassburn. You are correct. We got Ronnie Sheamus stepping in. Good looking young catcher. He's a sophomore. He had a big hit the other day against Medfield. There's a strike. Looks like he got fooled with that breaking pitch or off speed pitch or whatever it was. And McKenzie do up next. Up high, one and one. That was my dentist calling, if you want to know who was calling me. <laughs> I thought it was one of the fans. <laughs> Line up in the pitch. Gets a piece of this one over to left field. It goes. It's caught. Two away. Shea Donovan in the right place at the right time, and the Hillers are down to their final out. Ben McKenzie will step in. Today is May 9th, and the uh, Bruins will begin their playoff run well, against the Hurricanes. They'll well, they'll continue their, the their Eastern playoff Eastern run. The Eastern Conference Final. Run. Right. This starts in 15 minutes. It's 7.45 right now on the East Coast. There's a strike to McKenzie. Ben McKenzie has singled, struck out, and walked today. Amalfi has just been mystifying the Hillers hitters. Up high, one and one. He had the nerve to throw that breaking pitch. McKenzie should reach. Steven Simos would come up. Down oh. low. <laughs> <laughs> Looked good. I'm sure the Ashland coaching staff wanted a uh, call strike. The 2 1. Swing and a miss. McKenzie down to his final strike. Looked like he was guessing on that pitch. He didn't have a good cut at it. And there it is. Strike number three, out number three. And the Ashland Clockers have defeated the Hopkinton Hillers three to one. Ashland scored three runs on eight hits and committed no errors, while the Hillers scored one run on six hits and committed two errors. A tough loss for the Hillers, who fall to 10 and three. Ashland is now seven and five on the season. A big win here today for the Clockers. A very well pitched game by Brandon Kelly and Alex Amell. It was a good uh, pitching matchup today, Larry. Well, that is going to wrap it up. Ashland defeats Hopkinton three to one. Ashland now seven and five. Hillers fall to 10 and three. The Don Ritz on camera with broadcast partner Larry Sacklad. I'm Tom Nappy. The final score for the final time. Ashland defeats Hopkinton by a final score of three to one. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Go Bruins, and we'll talk to you again soon.